Hello everyone, it's Magic here, and this might be my new favorite funnel lens. It is a Siri 35mm T 2.9 anamorphic lens with 1.6 squeeze, and I love it. I absolutely adore this lens. I shot it in Japan. Little heads up, in this video I'm going to talk purely about taking photos with this lens, which is not what this lens is meant to be, but this is how I used it. So just so you know what's kind of happening in this video, I'm going to divide it into three sections. First is I'm going to talk about like this lens in general and how this lens works. Second is going to be I'm going to show you the photos I have took uh, on a couple shoot in Tokyo or in, like my street photos from Tokyo from this lens. And these are amazing, by the way. So, so this is going to be a fun part. And the third part is going to be kind of my thoughts on how I don't need to expand anymore. Okay, so let's start talking about the lens itself. So anamorphic lenses, if you don't know what's that. So these were actually made for like a film industry in order to shoot widescreen on a standard 35 millimeter uh, film and not lose any details. So to fill like a 35 millimeter with a widescreen footage. And these lenses are being widely used in the cinema and some of them have very intense characteristic like if you watch like Disney stuff or like Netflix stuff you're gonna see this lens everywhere. You're gonna see that oval bokeh so that's the one characteristic of this lens. The second one would be like these JJ Abrams flares so this anamorphic kind of horizontal flares across the image. And then the actually look of the image which is the look of the longer lens while getting like a wider field of view. I'm not going to get like super into the details if you want to learn more about anamorphics in general, like watch some filmmakers, YouTubers. These guys are talking about these lenses all the time. What you need to know is when you use this lens, like the footage that you see on the screen is a squeezed footage. So you don't see your kind of final frame because everything is squeezed and you have to desqueeze the image in post. I'm going to show you how I do it in the second part of this video. So, okay, so how does this particular 35 millimeter work? So uh, right now, what are you seeing right now? I'm going to move to 35 mil. Okay, I zoomed in. So I zoomed in this lens uh, to 35 millimeters. It's a 35 millimeters f4 lens. So this is how it looks. This is the frame of a 35 millimeters. And now I'm going to take off this lens. So this is 35 and the morphic. As you can see, it's vastly different. First of all, it's squeezed. So in order to squeeze this in post, you have to change the aspect ratio. So now you can see that like the final look, voila, this is it. And as you can see, like super different from a regular uh, 35 mil, right? You kind of get this 35 mil look, but like the angle, the view angle is just way, way wider. It's closer to a 22 millimeters. So this is the general idea of like how the anamorphic lenses look and what kind of look they can give you. So this specific lens, Siri 35, it's a budget kind of anamorphic lens. It's not cheap by any means, like for photography reasons, it's like $1,500. So it's like a G Master lens, uh, you know, equivalent in the price. But for like the anamorphic lens, this is like a fraction of the price of the big lenses they use in cinema. They're like tens of thousands of dollars. But this one, a full frame lens, mine is native Sony mount and it does come with like RF mount, L mount and Z mount. So all the four main mounts. It's a manual focus lens, so you don't get to have out of focus with this lens. And the build is actually super solid. It's quite big and heavy. And we have these two identical rings here. One is a focusing ring and the second one is aperture ring. And, and then what we have else is like this quarter inch threaded hole for like a lens support uh, thing. And we do have like 82 millimeters diameter for filters here in the front. For my personal preference as a photographer, I kind of dislike that these two rings are the same uh, because I, I was kept going back and forth thinking I'm focusing, but I was just changing my aperture and then I wish the aperture was clickable. But again, this lens was not made for photos, so there's no hard feelings. This is just my experience with like taking photos with this lens. Obviously for filmmaking stuff, this is amazing that these two rings are the same. And this is actually interesting that there are the same position 
in the whole lineup of these lenses from Siri. So if you have like all the gear for like follow focusing and stuff like that, you can just replace the lens and do not change anything because these are the same and in the same position. Okay, let's talk shooting with this lens. So I use Sony a7R5, which is a 61 megapixel camera, which is a plenty of megapixels in order to manipulate this image later on. By manipulate, I mean the squeezing the image. So obviously, again, you see on the screen a squeezed footage, which makes it kind of tricky to both compose and focus. So I found myself zooming in all the time on my camera in order to focus on the right subject. And um, after the first day of shooting, I shot like a couple of hours in Tokyo. I shot with like Taylor. So there's like a couple of portraits of Taylor and Marshall, the video guy. I actually just couldn't wait until I go back to the computer to just squeeze the images because I just wanted to see how will they look. And my process was I did import the photos to Lightroom first. I applied my initial edit, which is my Magic Adabra preset. All the photos is going to be edited with my Magic Adabra preset. You can purchase down below, by the way. Thanks so much. And so I applied the preset to the squeezed footage. And then I hit like Command E on my Mac, which is like edit in Photoshop. I put the photos in the Photoshop. I did create the action for the squeezing. So my action was the changing the image size. And I was changing the height to 62. 5% and that was making my footage looking like this, which is the final look. By making this action, I could just be like, you know, one click for the rest of the photos. So I was like, command E next photo, click on my action, save the next one and the next one. And then I was back in Lightroom to review the images. And I have to tell you, I love the look of these images. So as you can see here, mostly I do love the fact that this is the 35 mil like focal length with like the wider angle view. This amazing. I love it. Just look at these photos like with this extra width maintaining that look. Um, yeah, Like it looks just so good both for portraits and for like this kind of street stuff and you know the travel stuff. So Tokyo looks amazing in the wide angle like people on the street or just streets. They they look great. I do love the flare as well. And I am not only talking about that anamorphic flare. It's amazing. I like it. But I do also like like the the general flare from this lens. So here in like we were shooting kind of these photos in like sun setting. Some was pretty low, like coming slightly, you know, over that buildings. And yeah, it looks amazing. The flare is just like all over the place and it looks great. Also, I treat this lens as a fun lens, as a lens to give me some additional cool looking, interestingly looking images. Uh, so flare for me is something that I want in this type of images. And then I shot like a couple of portraits. We, I had like a couple shoot in, in Tokyo. Uh, there's a video coming like with the behind the scenes from the whole of this shoot. I shot A7R5 with a 35G Master and a 35 and the morphic. So stay tuned for that. But this time I decided to put a recorder on top of my camera. So I use actually I use this Axon Simo. So this is the recorder, the HDMI recorder that records on an iPhone. So I could just use my iPhone as my screen. And this recorder, there's an app that gives you an option to see the squeezed image on the screen of my iPhone. So it was slightly easier to compose, like seeing the disqueezed image. So that's how I shot like full session with it. And let's like, just look at these results. They look great. I love the fact that I'm just getting that extra width, that panoramic look. You, you could call it cinematic if you want, uh, but yeah, I really like it. And then the using the recorder just helped me with framing a lot, but also you can see that probably you've already seen that in these photos on the left and the right side of the frame. You see like this huge barrel distortion, which is very unfortunate. I didn't find an actual good fix for that because like using the lens correction in Lightroom uh, corrects like full image. But look at this. The middle of the frame is good. Only the left and the right of the sides are kind of distorted. So using lens correction just, you know, the fixes the left and the right parts of the frame, but like messes with the middle of the frame, which is not something that I want. So the only way I found to fix it was going into Photoshop again and using the liquify tool manually. I also recorded an action for this so I could just like apply this with one click. 
but yeah that's way better i think so that's the image after the liquify kind of correction that's the image before the liquify correction if you if you have a better way for doing this let me know down in the comments maybe siri will come out with like the profile for this lens that would be helpful i don't mind fixing this for a few images at this point but yeah it would be nice to have this you know right away not going back and forth to photoshop one more downside of this lens would be close focusing so this lens can focus only as close as 0.9 meters uh, which is quite far for like a 35 mil i would love to come slightly closer to get like more shallow depth for field but again i can live with that like just look again at these images they're amazing and i'll show you some, some more of these images from tokyo in a second in a third chapter when i'm going to talk about the expand thing but before i do this a quick break from the sponsor of this video which is imagine so check this out i have just edited my final wedding of 2022 with less than two hours 900 images less than two hours thanks to imagine so this is the ai editing tool that learns how i edit and applies this to my photos exactly like i would do so what you can see here is an edited wedding almost 900 images there are a few marked red that i edited manually uh, as a teaser for my couple so they're just couple edited photos we can use them in a reference in a second so in order to create your own profile you need to submit 3000 images and from these 3000 images the, the imagine will learn how you edit and create your profile so i can just simply click on this profile and use it to edit my photos I, I select the lightroom catalog i select the project i check the photos that i want to edit there are like multiple filters that you can use here so the only thing i do here is uncheck photos marked red because these are as i said already edited and now bam i just click edit and in this particular case of 900 images it took exactly 11 minutes from the moment I clicked start to the moment the photos were edited by Imagine. This is outstanding, 11 minutes. So now let's see the results and tweak the final photos. You can see them actually changing when you load Lightroom. So you can see the edits being applied to your photos as you just scroll through and just look at a couple of these photos. So this one, for example, you see, this is the one that I edited and this is the one that Imagine edited. They look like exactly the same color wise and the style wise. So like it's just working perfectly. Obviously you need to go through all the images in this particular case, it took me around 90 minutes to walk through every single image to tweak them. I do want to have like a final touch on these images, but still 90 minutes, $44. That's what it costed me. And bam that extremely helpful if you're a wedding photographer make sure to check it out you can claim your 1500 free edits with my link down in the description okay let's get back to tokyo look at these images more images final images so these are images with both the squeeze applied and my liquefied tool applied as well so like kind of final images edited with my preset uh, I, I like truly i couldn't be happier more about them they do remind me of an Hasselblad X-Pen camera. They give me that X-Pen vibe. If you don't know what X-Pen is, this is like the film camera shooting panoramic photos on 35 millimeter rolls. Uh, my friend uh, Thomas Wagner showed this camera to me in 2017 and I fell in love immediately. It was quite expensive back then, so I just didn't pull the trigger on this one. Now it's even more expensive. It's in the $10,000 range for like all the used film camera that might just break at any given time. So it's not a good purchase to be honest, but you know, a very legendary camera for sure. And I do actually think that this setup, so a modern camera, like a high megapixel camera, like this one, A7R5, uh, like that can shoot like high ISO, can shoot raw files, have lots of megapixels, with a lens like this, like can give me that look. It can give me that X pan look. There's like a small difference in the actual aspect ratio. So the X pan is 2.7 to 1, which is slightly wider than the Cirui anamorphic with 1.6 squeeze. But again, look at the details in my photos. Ability to shoot at night with no like big quality loss because of, you know, this is a modern camera. I feel like these are real advantages that makes this a solid option for not burning $10,000 for like an old film camera. And for me, kind of this dream that I want an x that I dreamed about x and I was looking at x in, in Japan as well. 
it's gone. I'm not interested in that anymore. I'm happy with this anamorphic solution that for photos with a 35 mil look, amazing. I truly love this. Let me know what you guys think about it in the comments. Check the blog post for to, to watch these photos. I put the blog post on my website so you can watch the photos. Happy holidays for you guys. I see you in the next video.